Introduction. The American Civil War, fought from 1861 to 1865, was a defining moment in American history. This war was fought between the Union States of the North and the Confederate States of the South, and resulted in the bloodiest conflict in American history. The Civil War had a significant impact on American society, politics, and culture, and it shaped the course of American history for decades to come. In this article, we will explore the causes of the American Civil War, major battles of the war, the role of Abraham Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation, the Confederate States of America, the Union Army and Confederate Army, the Reconstruction Era, slavery in America, and the Civil Rights Movement. By understanding these semantic entities, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the American Civil War and its impact on American history. Causes of the American Civil War Economic, Political, and Social Causes The American Civil War was caused by a variety of factors, including economic, political, and social tensions that had been building for decades. The North and the South had different economic systems, with the North relying on industry and the South on agriculture, particularly the production of cotton. These economic differences led to tensions over issues such as tariffs and taxes. Politically, the North and the South had different views on the role of the federal government. The North favored a strong federal government, while the South believed in states' rights and feared that the federal government was overstepping its bounds. These political tensions were exacerbated by the issue of slavery. Socially, the North and the South had different cultural values and ways of life. The North was more urban and industrial, while the South was more rural and agrarian. The South had a slave-based economy, while the North had abolished slavery. These social differences contributed to the tensions between the North and the South. Missouri Compromise and Compromise of 1850 The Missouri Compromise of 1820 and the Compromise of 1850 were attempts to address the issue of slavery and preserve the delicate balance between free and slave states. The Missouri Compromise prohibited slavery in the Louisiana Territory north of the 36 degrees 30 parallel, while the Compromise of 1850 allowed for the possibility of slavery in new territories, but also abolished the slave trade in Washington, D.C. These compromises were only temporary solutions to the issue of slavery, and ultimately failed to prevent the outbreak of war. The Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, which allowed for the possibility of slavery in new territories, reignited the debate over slavery and led to increased tensions between the North and the South. States' Rights The concept of states' rights was a significant factor in the outbreak of the American Civil War. The South believed that the federal government had overstepped its bounds and was infringing on the rights of the states. The southern states believed that they had the right to secede from the Union, and saw the federal government's attempts to prevent secession as a violation of states' rights. Role of Slavery Slavery was the primary cause of the American Civil War. The South relied on slavery as the backbone of its economy, while the North had abolished slavery. The issue of slavery had been a contentious issue in America since its founding, and tensions over slavery had been building for decades. The election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860 was the final straw for the southern states, who feared that his policies would threaten the institution of slavery. Seven southern states seceded from the Union in response, and formed the Confederate States of America. In conclusion, the American Civil War was caused by a combination of economic, political, and social tensions, as well as the issue of slavery. The Missouri Compromise and Compromise of 1850 attempted to address the issue of slavery, but ultimately failed to prevent the outbreak of war. The concept of states' rights also contributed to the conflict, as the South believed that the federal government was infringing on their rights. Slavery was the primary cause of the war, and the election of Abraham Lincoln was the final straw that led to the secession of the southern states. Major Battles of the American Civil War The American Civil War was fought between 1861 and 1865, and saw some of the bloodiest battles in American history. Here are some of the major battles of the war. Battle of Fort Sumter The Battle of Fort Sumter was the first battle of the American Civil War, and took place on April 12-14, 1861. The battle was fought between Confederate forces led by General P.G.T. Beauregard and Union forces under Major Robert Anderson. The Confederates bombarded the fort, and after a 34-hour siege, the Union forces surrendered. Battle of Antietam The Battle of Antietam was fought on September 17, 1862, and was the bloodiest single-day battle in American history. 
The battle was fought between Confederate forces under General Robert E. Lee and Union forces under General George McClellan. The Union Army was able to repel the Confederate invasion of Maryland, but suffered heavy losses. 3. Battle of Gettysburg the Battle of Gettysburg was fought on July 1-3, 1863, and was the turning point of the American Civil War. The battle was fought between Confederate forces under General Robert E. Lee and Union forces under General George Meade. The Union Army was able to repel the Confederate invasion of Pennsylvania, and the Confederate Army suffered heavy losses. The battle is often considered the high-water mark of the Confederacy. Siege of Vicksburg the Siege of Vicksburg was fought from May 18 to July 4, 1863, and was a critical victory for the Union Army. The battle was fought between Confederate forces under General John C. Pemberton and Union forces under General Ulysses S. Grant. The Union Army was able to successfully siege the city of Vicksburg, Mississippi, and gain control of the Mississippi River, effectively splitting the Confederacy in two. Battle of Appomattox Courthouse the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse was fought on April 9, 1865, and was the final battle of the American Civil War. The battle was fought between Confederate forces under General Robert E. Lee and Union forces under General Ulysses S. Grant. The Union Army was able to surround the Confederate Army, and after a brief skirmish, Lee surrendered. The surrender effectively ended the war. Tactics and Strategies the Union and Confederate armies employed a variety of tactics and strategies during the American Civil War. The Union Army was larger and better equipped than the Confederate Army, and relied on a strategy of attrition, wearing down the Confederate Army through a war of attrition. The Confederacy, on the other hand, relied on a strategy of defense, holding off Union advances and trying to exhaust Union resources. Outcomes and Impact the outcomes and impact of the major battles of the American Civil War were significant. The Union Army was able to successfully defend against Confederate invasions, and gain control of the Mississippi River. The Confederate Army suffered heavy losses, and was eventually forced to surrender. The impact of the war on American society was also significant, as it led to the abolition of slavery and the reunification of the United States. Abraham Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation Abraham Lincoln was the 16th President of the United States, serving from 1861 until his assassination in 1865. Lincoln played a crucial role in leading the Union through the American Civil War. Biography of Abraham Lincoln Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809, in Hodgenville, Kentucky. He was largely self-educated and worked as a lawyer and politician before being elected President in 1860. During his presidency, he faced the daunting task of leading the Union through the Civil War. Lincoln was known for his strong leadership, eloquence, and his commitment to ending slavery in America. The Emancipation Proclamation One of Lincoln's most significant acts as president was the Emancipation Proclamation, which he issued on January 1, 1863. The proclamation declared that all slaves in Confederate territory were to be freed, although it did not apply to slaves in Union-held areas. The Emancipation Proclamation had a significant impact on the course of the Civil War. It changed the focus of the war from simply preserving the Union to ending slavery. It also helped to rally support for the Union cause in Europe, as many countries were opposed to slavery. The proclamation also paved the way for the passage of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which abolished slavery throughout the United States. Controversy Surrounding the Emancipation Proclamation Although the Emancipation Proclamation was a significant step in the fight against slavery, it was not without controversy. Some abolitionists criticized the proclamation for not going far enough, as it did not apply to slaves in Union-held areas. Others were concerned that the proclamation would lead to a wave of violence and uprisings in the South. Some Confederates also criticized the proclamation, arguing that it was an unconstitutional overreach of executive power. Others argued that it was an attempt to incite slaves to rebellion, and that it would ultimately lead to the downfall of the Confederacy. Despite the controversy, the Emancipation Proclamation remains a significant milestone in the fight against slavery and the struggle for civil rights in America. Confederate States of America The Confederate States of America was a short-lived country that existed from 1861 to 1865. It was formed by 11 southern states that seceded from the United States in response to growing tensions over issues such as states' rights and slavery. Overview of the Confederate States of America 
The Confederate States of America was established on February 4, 1861, in Montgomery, Alabama. The Confederacy was led by President Jefferson Davis, a former U.S. Senator from Mississippi, and Vice President Alexander Stevens, a former U.S. Representative from Georgia. The Confederate States of America was made up of the following states, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. Reasons for the Secession of the Southern States The Southern States seceded from the United States for a variety of reasons, but the most significant issue was the question of slavery. The Southern States believed that they had the right to own slaves and that the federal government had no authority to interfere with this right. Other issues that contributed to the secession included economic and political differences between the North and South, such as tariffs and taxes, as well as concerns over states' rights and the role of the federal government. Impact of the Confederate States of America on the War The establishment of the Confederate States of America had a significant impact on the Civil War. It transformed the conflict from a political dispute into a full-blown war between two separate countries. The Confederacy was able to field a formidable army, and it won several early victories in the war. However, the Confederate States of America faced significant challenges throughout the war. It struggled to maintain a stable government, and its economy was badly weakened by the Union's naval blockade. The Confederacy was also at a disadvantage in terms of resources and manpower, as the Union had a much larger population and a more developed industrial base. Despite these challenges, the Confederate States of America fought on until its final defeat in 1865. The legacy of the Confederacy and the Civil War remains a controversial and complex topic in American history. Union Army and Confederate Army The American Civil War was fought between two opposing armies, the Union Army and the Confederate Army. Both sides had their own strengths and weaknesses, and their respective impacts on the war were significant. Overview of the Union Army and Confederate Army The Union Army, also known as the Federal Army or the Northern Army, was the Army of the United States during the Civil War. It was led by President Abraham Lincoln and was comprised primarily of troops from the Northern States, although it also included soldiers from some Southern States. The Confederate Army, also known as the Southern Army, was the Army of the Confederate States of America. It was led by President Jefferson Davis and was comprised primarily of troops from the Southern States. Strengths and Weaknesses of Each Army the Union Army had several significant advantages over the Confederate Army. It had a larger population from which to draw troops, a more developed industrial base, and a stronger navy. The Union Army also had better access to resources such as weapons, ammunition, and supplies. The Confederate Army, on the other hand, had several advantages of its own. It was fighting on its home turf and was therefore more familiar with the terrain and local conditions. The Confederate Army also had some highly skilled generals, such as Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson, who were able to win some early victories in the war. Both armies had their weaknesses as well. The Union Army initially struggled with ineffective leadership and poor morale, and it suffered several early defeats. The Confederate Army struggled with a lack of resources, including food, ammunition, and medical supplies, as well as internal divisions and political instability. Impact of each army on the war both the Union Army and Confederate Army had a significant impact on the outcome of the Civil War. The Union Army was ultimately able to overpower the Confederate Army through superior resources, manpower, and strategy. The Union's victories at key battles, such as Gettysburg and Vicksburg, played a crucial role in turning the tide of the war in its favor. The Confederate Army, despite its eventual defeat, was able to hold out for several years and inflict significant damage on the Union Army. The Confederate Army's victories at battles such as Bull Run and Chancellorsville demonstrated its fighting prowess and boosted the morale of Confederate troops and civilians alike. In the end, the Union Army's victory over the Confederate Army was a major turning point in American history. It led to the abolition of slavery and the reunification of the United States, and it established the federal government's authority over the states. Overview of the Confederate States of America and its leaders The Confederate States of America was a government established by 11 southern states that seceded from the United States in 1860 and 1861, in the wake of Abraham Lincoln's election as president. Its capital was in Richmond, Virginia, and its president was Jefferson Davis, who had previously served as a U.S. Senator from Mississippi. 
Other notable leaders of the Confederate States of America included Vice President Alexander Stevens, General Robert E. Lee, and General Stonewall Jackson. Explanation of the reasons for the secession of the Southern States The Southern States seceded from the United States for a variety of reasons, but the primary cause was the issue of slavery. The Southern States believed that they had the right to own slaves and that the federal government had no authority to regulate or abolish slavery. When Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860, he was seen as a threat to the institution of slavery, and many Southerners feared that he would seek to abolish it. This led to the secession of the Southern States, which formed the Confederate States of America and declared that slavery was a fundamental and unchangeable part of their society. Discussion of the impact of the Confederate States of America on the war The Confederate States of America had a significant impact on the American Civil War, both in terms of military strategy and political influence. The Confederacy had several early victories in the war, and its army was initially able to hold its own against the Union Army. However, the Confederacy suffered from a lack of resources, including food, ammunition, and medical supplies, as well as internal divisions and political instability. The Confederate States of America was also a significant political force during the war, and its leaders played a key role in shaping the political landscape of the time. The Confederacy was never officially recognized as a sovereign nation by foreign powers, but it had diplomatic relations with several countries, including the United Kingdom and France. The Confederacy also had a significant impact on the United States political landscape, and the issue of slavery and states' rights remained contentious long after the war ended. In the end, the Confederate States of America was defeated by the Union Army, and the Confederacy was dissolved. The end of the war led to the abolition of slavery and the reunification of the United States, but it also left a lasting legacy of political and social divisions that persisted for generations. Overview of the Union Army and Confederate Army The American Civil War, fought from 1861 to 1865, was a conflict between the Union Army and the Confederate Army. The Union Army, also known as the Federal Army or the Northern Army, was the Army of the United States during the Civil War. It was led by President Abraham Lincoln and primarily comprised troops from the northern states, although it also included soldiers from some southern states. The Confederate Army, also known as the Southern Army, was the Army of the Confederate States of America. It was led by President Jefferson Davis and primarily comprised troops from the southern states. Strengths and Weaknesses of Each Army The Union Army had several significant advantages over the Confederate Army. It had a larger population from which to draw troops, a more developed industrial base, and a stronger navy. The Union Army also had better access to resources such as weapons, ammunition, and supplies. However, the Union Army initially struggled with ineffective leadership and poor morale, which led to several early defeats. The Confederate Army, on the other hand, had several advantages of its own. It was fighting on its home turf and was therefore more familiar with the terrain and local conditions. The Confederate Army also had some highly skilled generals, such as Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson, who were able to win some early victories in the war. However, the Confederate Army struggled with a lack of resources, including food, ammunition, and medical supplies, as well as internal divisions and political instability. Impact of each army on the war Both the Union Army and Confederate Army had a significant impact on the outcome of the Civil War. The Union Army was ultimately able to overpower the Confederate Army through superior resources, manpower, and strategy. The Union's victories at key battles, such as Gettysburg and Vicksburg, played a crucial role in turning the tide of the war in its favor. Additionally, the Union Army's blockade of Confederate ports severely limited the Confederate Army's ability to receive supplies and reinforcements from foreign sources. The Confederate Army, despite its eventual defeat, was able to hold out for several years and inflict significant damage on the Union Army. The Confederate Army's victories at battles such as Bull Run and Chancellorsville demonstrated its fighting prowess and boosted the morale of Confederate troops and civilians alike. However, the Confederate Army's inability to secure foreign recognition and support, as well as its lack of resources, ultimately led to its defeat. In conclusion, the Union Army's victory over the Confederate Army was a major turning point in American history. It led to the abolition of slavery and the reunification of the United States, and it established the federal government's authority over the states. The Reconstruction Era in the United States refers to the period following the Civil War, 1861 to 1865, when the federal government attempted to rebuild the South and integrate newly freed slaves into society. 
The goals of Reconstruction included restoring the Union, rebuilding the South's infrastructure, and ensuring the rights and freedoms of African Americans. There were different approaches to Reconstruction, each with its own goals and strategies. The Radical Republicans believed in a more aggressive approach that would punish the South for their rebellion, ensure the political and economic rights of African Americans, and give the federal government more power over the states. The moderate Republicans advocated for a more conciliatory approach that would seek to reconcile the North and South and rebuild the South's economy. The Democrats generally opposed Reconstruction, believing it was an overreach of federal power and that it threatened the traditional social order. Overall, Reconstruction can be seen as a mixed success. On one hand, it did achieve some important goals, such as abolishing slavery, establishing the rights of citizenship for African Americans, and creating a public school system in the South. Additionally, the Reconstruction Amendments to the Constitution, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, laid the groundwork for greater civil rights for all Americans. However, Reconstruction also faced significant challenges and failures. The resistance of white Southern Democrats and the rise of groups like the Ku Klux Klan made it difficult to enforce the new laws and protect the rights of African Americans. The federal government's commitment to Reconstruction waned over time, and the withdrawal of federal troops from the South in 1877 marked the end of Reconstruction. This allowed Southern Democrats to regain control and institute a system of racial segregation known as Jim Crow, which lasted until the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s. Overview of the History of Slavery in America Slavery was a significant institution in American history that played a key role in the country's development. Slavery began in America in 1619 when the first Africans were brought to the Jamestown colony in Virginia as indentured servants. Over time, the practice of enslaving Africans became more common, and slavery became a legal and institutionalized part of American society. Slavery was primarily concentrated in the southern states, where it was closely tied to the region's agricultural economy, particularly cotton production. By the mid-19th century, slavery had become a highly divisive issue between the northern and southern states, leading to the outbreak of the American Civil War. Discussion of the Impact of Slavery on the Civil War Slavery was a major cause of the American Civil War, with the northern states opposing the practice and the southern states defending it. The issue of slavery had been a point of contention between the northern and southern states for decades, and tensions between the two regions eventually boiled over into armed conflict. The Confederacy, which supported the institution of slavery, was fighting to preserve the practice, while the Union, which opposed slavery, was fighting to end it. The war ultimately resulted in the defeat of the Confederacy and the abolition of slavery throughout the United States. Explanation of the Legacy of Slavery in America The legacy of slavery in America is complex and far-reaching. Although slavery was abolished over 150 years ago, its impact is still felt in American society today. Slavery has contributed to ongoing racial disparities and inequalities, including economic, social, and political disparities. The effects of slavery have also been felt in the criminal justice system, with African Americans disproportionately represented in the prison population. Additionally, the history of slavery has contributed to ongoing racial tensions and prejudices, as well as the ongoing struggle for racial justice and equality. Efforts have been made to address the legacy of slavery in America, including reparations, educational programs, and initiatives aimed at promoting racial equity and justice. However, the impact of slavery is still evident in many aspects of American society, and the work to address its legacy is ongoing. The Civil Rights Movement was a social and political movement that sought to secure legal and constitutional rights for African Americans and other marginalized groups in the United States. The movement was active from the 1950s to the 1970s and was characterized by nonviolent protests, civil disobedience, and grassroots organizing. Goals The main goals of the Civil Rights Movement were to end segregation and discrimination, secure voting rights for African Americans, and address economic and social inequality. The movement sought to achieve these goals through a variety of tactics, including boycotts, sit-ins, voter registration drives, and legal challenges. Impact of the Civil War The Civil War played an important role in laying the groundwork for the Civil Rights Movement. The abolition of slavery in the United States and the passage of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution represented significant legal and political gains for African Americans. However, 
These gains were largely nullified by the rise of Jim Crow laws, which enforced racial segregation and discrimination in the South. Successes The Civil Rights Movement achieved significant successes in the areas of voting rights, education, and public accommodations. The Voting Rights Act of 1965, which eliminated discriminatory voting practices, and the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which banned discrimination in employment and public accommodations, were major victories for the movement. The movement also played a key role in desegregating schools and universities. Failures. Despite its successes, the civil rights movement also faced significant challenges and setbacks. Many of the economic and social inequalities that the movement sought to address persist to this day. The movement was also criticized for failing to fully address issues of police brutality and systemic racism in the criminal justice system. Additionally, the movement was met with significant resistance from white supremacists and segregationists, who used violence and intimidation to oppose desegregation and civil rights. The assassination of key leaders such as Martin Luther King Jr. also dealt a blow to the movement. In this article, we covered several important topics related to American history. We started with an overview of the American Civil War, including the Union Army and Confederate Army, their strengths and weaknesses, and their impact on the war. We also discussed the Confederate States of America, its leaders, and the reasons for secession. We then moved on to the Reconstruction Era and its goals, as well as the different approaches to Reconstruction and the successes and failures of that period. We also explored the history of slavery in America, its impact on the Civil War, and its lasting legacy. Finally, we covered the Civil Rights Movement, its goals, and its impact on American society, including its successes and failures. It is important to understand the American Civil War and its impact on American history because it shaped the nation we know today. The war and its aftermath played a significant role in the abolition of slavery, the expansion of civil rights, and the growth of the federal government's authority over the states. By studying this period, we can gain a better understanding of the challenges and triumphs of the American people, and learn valuable lessons that can inform our present and future.